Hey everyone, Gregor Arturo here. I want to give you an update on all the amazing things that are happening right now um, and also how you can participate. And so, uh, first and foremost, the, uh, the Star Coil. Um, I, I think I've, I've, definitely, I've made a video about this one already. This is a 3D printed uh, bronze stainless steel mix gold plated. Um, we have a few of these ordered right now coming in. Um, and uh, actually like eight of them. I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited actually. And uh, they have this gold plate fish on. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's starting to wear off. It's a really weak plating coming from the company. Um, I'm not even sure if it's like might be eight carat. Anyways, uh, I, uh, there's a plating professional plating place across uh, down the street from here, a few blocks um, here in LA. And they've been plating for like 50 years. I'm going to get them to 24 karat gold plated and I'm going to be offering this for $333 and so one of the things to like I mean there's a bunch I can talk about right now and uh, when I went to a dentist today for the first time in like oh eight years seven years no it was 2010 2010 is the last time I've been to a dentist and uh, to get these all these mercury fillings removed I have six mercury fillings I'm getting removed two of them have fallen out on their own um, there's a whole story behind how I got these mercury fillings. I had plastic ones before it, uh, but it's it's been causing an issue. I've had uh, quite a couple naturopaths tell me I'm suffering from heavy metal toxicity, and it's really affecting my field. A lot of the intuitives around me are always picking up, Gregor, you need you need to take care of that. You need to get the mercury out. You need to get the mercury out. And so it's been like this, you know, these weights holding me down in terms of me uh, evolving my, you could say, my energetic presence. Anyways. Uh, the whole pro well, two of them have fallen fallen out on their own, and one of them from falling out has actually the tooth is completely dead. I'm a dead molar in my mouth, and so I have to get it pulled out. And so going to an awesome holistic dentist, Dr. Lori, I can't say her Cardellino. She's in Ventura. Everyone in the festival scene goes here, so I highly recommend her. She's freaking phenomenal. Great downloads in terms of like your teeth getting connected to your meridians, and the the mercury fillings will cause uh, your like brain plates to actually shift, they've studied, um, and that your brain, the, the actual skull is shifting, it's not permanently fixed. Um, just stuff I would not have imagined, at, le at least the second fact, meridian thing I knew. Um, anyways, uh, it's like a $2,500 procedure, and I have, and it's in two parts, the first one's like a thousand, and so I'm going in back tomorrow to get this thousand dollar procedure. I have the money, but you know it's making things tight. Um, technically, I'm using a little funding, but I was in severe pain this week, and so like it has to happen because I can't do my work. Um, and so one of the things is like offering this product, and like I could do a GoFundMe, like hey, send me some money to help me fix my teeth. But the thing is, I'm like saying like hey guys, I'm doing this altruistic project, and that's why it's it's taken so long because I've invested so much of my money. I mean. Everything. I've lived this life for eight years. I took nine months off as an electrician because of the bullshit I dealt with at a research firm and working with Bruce Perlin, the king of pot, and on this giant project in Vegas. And like, and just getting severely fucked over on those two projects. Um, and like being burnt out. And I'm like, I'm done playing the game, guys. I'm done. I'm going to go be normal. And like, I tried to be normal for nine months. And that was mind numbing. I don't know how people can be normal all the time. It's just that doesn't work for me. And I got back into the game um, and been playing it ever since. And so I've put my life, sweat, and blood into this work. And so what I'm saying a product is like getting the star of Solomon, the star of soul. This represents the heart chakra. The heart chakra relates to the alchemical metal of gold. And this is why I'm going to get this plane in 24 karat gold. Since this plane came off, it's actually gotten a little weaker energetically. And so people have picked up and are like, oh, it doesn't have the kick it did. I'm like, I know, because it doesn't have a complete gold surface on it anymore. But that was also like a weak gold. I, it definitely wasn't 14 karat. Um, I'm not sure what's below 14 karat. I mean, there's all these carats. 8 karat, whatever. It's weak um, in terms of the actual gold plating. There's a thin surface. So we're getting a thicker 24 karat gold plating that should not rub off. That should last a really long time. Like, they played these for like 60 seconds. We're going to play this for like 8 hours and 24 karat. And so real, solid, pure gold. Um, and so the manifestation abilities should be supreme. And uh, so the thing is, I'm, I'm, one, it's this supports my work. This supports what I'm doing with energy systems and so forth. And so like the, the thing that I'm going to be doing is 
uh, making a three-phase um, resonant circuit. And this resonant frequency of this coil is 2.9 gigahertz. If you know anything about resonant frequency, that's really high up there. And it's pretty, it's, it's almost near impossible to find a frequency generator that can put out three-phase 2.9 gigahertz. But if uh, you start pulsing high voltage, so not just like really high voltage, you can get these guys to levitate. So I'm going to get one of these actually made out of aluminum. Um, and uh, aluminum is really easy because it's light um, to levitate. Um, and uh, it's, you can see if you take a piece of aluminum and you put over a AC electromagnet that has a high, you know, high enough output, usually voltage in it, um, it's able to repel it into the air because you get induced diamagnetism, it's called. And so you get changing eddy currents. So whenever the, the pull on the electromagnet is north, the it's going to be reflective in the aluminum, it'll be south, but then it flips and that says north. And so it's constantly repelling and uh, creating an opposing alternating field in the material. The thing is, what if you create any opposing alternating material that's uh, in uh, perfect uh, 180 degree phasing with the signal that's being created? And so not only can you levitate the coil, but you can get, 100, uh, you can get 120 degree phasing a signature, polyphase, three phase, is what Tesla pulled off, um, in the system, which is necessary for rotation. So you can create a vortex in the ether. You can create vorticular motion to get the coil spinning. And so let's say you're getting the coil spinning at, um, you know, like 500 megahertz. And so, um, or even just like, well, we got 2.9 gigahertz. So let's do it. If we get going at 29 megahertz, we, we get this guy pulsing at 29 megahertz. That means we gotta get the coil spinning up to uh, 100, 100 RPMs per minute. And honestly, we're gonna get way faster than 100 RPMs. Like, we could get up to 50,000 RPMs. Um, but let's say we're just getting 100 RPMs at 29 megahertz. That means uh, the actual signal in the coil is 2.9 gigahertz. It's just a simple multiplication. Uh, 100 times uh, 29, uh, or two, 29 megahertz. Um, equals 2900 megahertz or 2.9 gigahertz. And so you're able to then use lower signal input and get the higher frequency. So if you get, you know, uh, 10,000 RPMs, then you only need 290 kilohertz. You're getting into low RF. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's a big deal, especially with Tesla coils, because that's usually where you're getting frequencies around. And so you can actually use three Tesla coils um, and get them 120 degree phasing in like the megahertz range and get this coil levitating and getting it to go at its resonance frequency in polyphase, in vorticular motion, self-organizing the ether into juicy goodness. And so, uh, you know, everyone wants the technology and understanding these energy systems, but like this stuff is great for your personal being. I mean, like, whew, I mean, it still packs a punch right now, and I can't wait to get the 24 karat iron. So uh, if you're interested in supporting this work, I, I have, like, like some residual low-income funding right now. It's nothing substantial. Um, and then it, it fluctuates with more and less. And, like, but, like, for the Sonicore system, which I'm developing with Prometheus Initiative, which we got the provisional patent for, um, it is a uh, acoustic material reduction process uh, for producing nanocrystals. And so I can take any raw material, scrap metal, raw ore, and break it down with sound to the atomic level, uh, nanocrystals. And so uh, this is the uh, industrial, this is, we're, talk, we're talking about getting the industrial crystal, uh, the manufacturing of, of crystalline materials. It's a whole new era coming around the corner. This is actually, this is some of the juiciest stuff. So this is the alchemical process of dissolution. So once you do dissolve the material into the nanocrystals and you get pure elements or pure molecules, such as say nanocrystalline gold or nanocrystalline silica, um, if you broke down quartz, and then you're able to use um, sorting methods with acoustic, magnetic, electrical processes, um, um, a vibrational sorting process, because you have discrete resonances. When these are pure, there's no impurities. So you can actually get a pure resonant frequency to that molecule or to that element. And so you can sort things into their specific components. And so you can get 100% pure gold. And cast say 100% pure gold coil. Heck yes. Um, uh, there is no, everything's, you know, 99.99999%. 
And so then you get into, um, so that's the alchemical process of uh, purification. And then you get an alchemical process of uh, crystallization, where you can take this, that pure material, like the pure gold, cast it into a coil, traditional casting, locks wax, locks wax, lost wax cast method, and you can get the wax printed from a 3D printer, either in wax or a resin cast um, that you burn out. Um, and then you pour the gold in. After it's poured in solid, you then can anneal it at a specific temperature um, and let it, at, while in a magnetic and or electric field, and let it cool, and you can let it cool into a single crystal. There is no crystalline metals on this planet, really, at a macro scale. So that means we can break down steel, like cheap, rusted, iron steel, large grain, just weak ass shit. Um, break it down, take out the impurities, cast it in a 20-foot girder, anneal it in a magnetic field, and voila, we got crystalline steel, theoretical maximum strength, 55 times stronger than mild steel, 15 times stronger than the strongest steel in the market. I mean, that's crazy awesome shit. And so uh, this is where I'm like seeking about like 100,000 funding right now, at least for this initial prototype. Um, I have a really awesome business meeting tomorrow that I'm like excited about. I get to like hang out with Russ Grease in it. Pretty psyched. Russ is an awesome engineer. Um, so yeah, things are happening. Oh, and I am like talking to Bebop Gressa. He's the CEO of Hyperloop uh, a few days ago and um, uh, showed him the coil. And like I've been working now with Hyperloop for like six months as an engineering specialist. And told me you know, this new type of magnet I'm working on and understanding how to create a rotating magnetic field. Um, and so you create a permanent magnet, you can also use it as an electromagnet. The system I'm talking about is you can actually do it with an electromagnet um, uh, or induced magnetism. The permanent magnet, you get a rotational magnetic field, so the north self is aligned. This is my, you know, my star coil uh, article. You see a picture of it, um, which is this new article. If you haven't seen, read it yet, it's on my website, Gregor.ninja. Star coils, pathways to light, lays out all that cool, awesome shit and the potentials of it, metaphysically and technologically. Um, and uh, he's like, oh, we're having an issue with, you know, the, um, the magnetic coupling system. And they're using permanent magnets over a copper rail because you can induce diamagnetism, like just the exact same thing I was saying about just in reverse. And so as long as you have alternating magnets on, on the train and it's being moved around this copper rail, you get repulsion and it levitates up. So you don't need magnets over magnets, you need magnets over conductors. Um, it's a geometry issue. My specialty is geometry and magnetic fields. <laughs> so uh, this will be awesome if I can solve this engineering uh, challenge. Um, I'm pretty confident. And so that's another awesome thing going underway and me teaming up with some other openness here in LA to bring some high quality products to market. And so, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm working on this like self love thing and taking care of myself and getting my teeth fixed. Uh, and so, if you feel like giving to this project and helping support these awesome endeavors, at the same time getting a fucking badass, guys, this is, this is so badass. Like, I mean, people like pitch products all the time, okay? Eight years of like love, sweat, and blood for humanity. I mean, literally blood. I mean, look at that. See, see this? Or, or, that burn? Yeah, that's a burn, you know, making these star cools. I may have that burn for the rest of my life. That's second degree on my head recently, you know, and it's like, it happens. Uh, but like so much goes into this project. This is, this is my life. I live it. I don't know how to more. I can express my passion. And sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall, but it's getting more and more through people are understanding more of what I'm talking about because some of these ideas are so next level and we're getting into like, what is this type of imaginary science I'm getting into? I'm saying imaginary is envisioning a new type of science. Most people with imagination, they're externalizing their imagination. They're like, hey, imagine what it's like to fly. They're imagining, you know, them as a cartoon character flying instead of them really flying. What's it like to feel like flying? What's it like to wake up in the morning and feel abundance, to, to not feel scarcity, to have prosperity at your fingertips, to have all that anxiety let go? What does that really feel like? Will you allow yourself to feel that on the daily or even just this moment? Just like sit with it and there's like, like fully take it in and use it as a reference point to like move forward all aspects of your life. So I'm talking, imagination can move everything. Einstein even himself is, has this famous quote on imagination. I can't think of it on the top of my head, but like without it, you're dead. You know, we're, we're stagnant. And so 
this might seem simple, but when you get into the, it's called the Seal of Solomon. Solomon is the greatest alchemist of all time, 950 BC. He built the Temple of Jerusalem. When he built that temple, he also constructed a stargate. And there was the Ark of the Covenant. And then uh, Nebuchadnezzar, like a few hundred years after his death, marched on it, took the stargate. The Ark of the Covenant was snuck out and brought to like Egypt. Stargate was brought to, to Babylon, turned on, something happened, it got buried. Uh, Saddam Hussein dug it up, started saying, hey guys, I got this target, I'm going to use it. And the U.S. got scared and we invaded and like, da -da, and that's history. This is our life and we are so disconnected with it. So motherfucking disconnected with it, what actually is going on. And that there's truth, there's story. J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis used to hang out and with, with studying the fundamental aspects of mythology. I mean, Tolkien's first story um, I can't say the word, but before The Hobbit, was about Atlantis, and what Atlantis really was. And they, they realized the significance of the rings, and the rings playing such a fundamental part into the human psyche. C.S. Lewis's first book in, in the Chronicles of Narnia, most people know The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, is actually the magician's nephew, and it's about two rings that can like transport you to other worlds. And there is this fundamental thing in the psyche, really understanding the Taurus, and how the Taurus relates to light, to electromagnetism. This is so significant. This is so profound. And we've been so disconnected from who we are. And that we're light. And, or at least our embodiment in this reality is, is with light. And our consciousness comes through the light. Light and sound is everything. And we can really simplify it. We can get so simple. Um, when we get into like vortex-based mathematics, you just see the patterns of one, one, two, three, two, two, one, three. That's the Fibonacci sequence going in cycles. Um, that relates to tesseract geometry, fourth dimensional geometry. It's super complex, yet super simple at the same time. Because everything's just extrapolated simplicity. As Buckminster Fuller says, it's all emergence. It's just these ideas coming forth um, from, from simplicity into complexity, but it's just extrapolated uh, simplicity is all it is. Uh, wow! It's so, everything on the earth plane really is so amazing. The, the amount of life, I mean, just the biological uh, uh, aspects on this planet, the amount of wildlife and the species is phenomenal. And like, how do, how do we reinstill the curiosity and awe within the human being so we can put down fucking Pope, Pokemon Go and actually go like, wow, did you see outside? There's so much awesome things. Did you see that fern, what the Fibonacci sequence is doing to it? Wow. But we just get disconnected. We don't even look at it. We, just don't, we, don't, even, we don't even appreciate the green in the plants anymore. We're getting so disconnected from the essence of all the goodness to where we have to take some mushrooms and be like, wow, that's so pretty. But when the thing is, you don't need the mushrooms. You don't need the psychedelics to realize this is so fucking badass. It really is. And so... Like, everything I do is, to, is, is out of love, is to inspire this true essence within the core of our being to say, yes, I want to change, I want to evolve, I want to engage myself and work on myself to become a fucking amazing, badass, motherfucking human being. Why not? I ask you, why not? And so, it's all, like, really good. It's so fucking good. I mean, this morning... I did a uh, acoustic reading. It's like a past life regression, and so like, God, it was like awesome. And I had this real issue. Um, I'm gonna be honest and blunt and like a little vulnerable here. It's, um, I mean, it's not hard for me to be vulnerable if you get to know me. I'll fucking say whatever the fuck I want to say. Uh, it's like I had this issue with Atlantis and, um, and guilt with it, and so Atlantis has been in my psyche since a little kid. Um, and I've stayed, 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 stayed. What is Atlantis? It was one reason I got into classics and archaeology, and then you could say past life dreams I've had. And in this like 45 minute session, I got quite the download. Uh, and it just reaffirmed. And so this is just like, with like when you really tune into yourself, and you're looking at your astrology for the day, you're looking at tarot cards, beginning a classic reading, and seeing and hearing about your past lives and so on. It's, it's really just an affirmation, a, re a reaffirmation of who you are. And the thing is, I, I'm not going to go into who my past lives are. And then actually in this reading, we really go into my past lives in, in, in the traditional sense. And it was more, you would say, a more complex reading because I'm a complex person and there's a per complex person giving me the reading. And so it's really hard to relay all that. And it's not even necessary to really relay it because I just am. I am, guys. I am. And you are. You are. I am. You are. I am. And that's not simple. 
and we're in this to uh, experience a really good time, to, to learn what joy and pleasure and, and have these wonderful experiences and that we're actually getting out of the age of suffering. We can let go of the suffering. We can move into abundance if we consciously choose to do it. Keyword, consciously choose. Two words. It's a choice, but it's a conscious choice. You have to choose to let go. And so uh, with that like experience today, I was literally just like, one sentence was said and I consciously chose to let that go. It was so easy. It was one of the easiest things I let go. It was a breath of fresh air. It just was a reality shift. It was like, look at all of a sudden 90 degrees and instead of forward looking, I've been looking at this whole time. It's like I've been stuck on the suffering instead of seeing you can almost get the big picture. The big picture was just like, oh, oh, yeah, you know? And you can say that, I mean, Atlantis was supposed to go down. It was supposed to go down. Um, and there's a lot of things that have happened in this world. You can say the two towers were supposed to go down. And was it fucking horrific? Yes, absolutely. Um, and there's some serious bullshit behind all that. Um, but full circle, guys, things are good right now. We are moving into the age of Aquarius. We're all waking up. We're getting into our true power, our true divinity. And, um... Yeah, there is still plenty of bullshit. I mean, you know, obviously the U.S. presidential system thing going on. And it's a fucking distraction. There's just so many distractions. I challenge you to identify all your motherfucking distractions in your life and say goodbye, 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 goodbye. Just let them go. Because there's something so much more profound right here in front of you. A m amazing story. But don't get too caught up in the story. Don't get too caught up in your character and just be. I am. What is your greatest passion? And my greatest passion at the moment is this. This is my life. This is so juicy. This is a culmination of all the great masters on the earth plane. From Plato to Nostradamus to Galileo, to Tesla, to Einstein, to Bucky Fuller, to Newton. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on of all the great masters who influenced me to build this. And then especially Marco Rowan, founder of Vortex Based Math Max. Fucking badass. Love you, Marco. Absolutely love you. And the, the thing is, we are just a synthesis of everything because we're just one. And so you can say, I built this, guys. This is my creation. But the thing is, this won't have happened without Tesla. This won't have happened without Marco Rodin. This won't have happened without all these great men who left, and women, don't forget the women, especially Elizabeth Rauscher, modern-day physicist, mind-blowing. I mean, she wrote in The Sims' Pants, and The Sims sort of took them. Uh, and so I also heard The Sims lost his funding, you see. You know, God bless you, The Sim. Uh, and that... I'd be nothing. I would just be a Neanderthal without all this stuff in the past to make me who I am now. All the incarnations I've experienced have led me to this moment of full expression of my divinity, of myself. This is a culmination of the past into the now. As we all are. This is the story. So hop on board and play and participate. Because you know what? It doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't. This is this is where Earth gets to like the highest point of epicness you can imagine. Ascension is underway. And so like the Mandala effect is like a great example in my opinion of Ascension. It's not CERN, it's not some psyops here to fuck with you. I mean, that's popular vote of the subconscious collapsing. That's exactly what that's happening, as all these timelines are converging into one timeline, and then maybe split into two, depending on the polarities of the, like, the popular vote. It's, it's really interesting when you start to apply all these different concepts in our reality to the, the core aspects of metaphysics. I mean, the article I just wrote is the best way I can describe the higher levels of operation of this coil is with computer information systems, to a T. I mean, Matrix is a great metaphor, that whole movie. It really is. Well, being we're hitting the 25 minute mark and like this is the video is dragged out a little bit, but I hope you took something from it. I hope there's something you can gain from this experience of self-expression of, of myself. And I encourage you to turn on a camera and talk to yourself 
and see where it goes. And just maybe it resonates with you so much that you get to share it with the world as well. Because that's what we're all here is to share beauty. It's, it's the juiciness of it all. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love all of you and blessings.